Right, hello there ladies and gents, welcome to another repair video. Today we're going to be working on this Nintendo Switch which has been sent in. This console has been sent because it's got a 2101-0001 error and typically when we get this error code it happens when we turn on the console and it's typically caused by a bad M92T36 or the bad charging port, sometimes both, sometimes just one of them. So I'm going to charge this up while I go ahead and disassemble it because the battery has just died on it and unfortunately not because it's now not charging. So let's take it apart and I'll hook it up to my bench power supply and then we'll take it from there. While I've got your attention if you are new to the channel and you enjoy this type of content I would really appreciate it if you hit subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so that you're notified whenever I release a video. I also now stream on Twitch from time to time. I stream repairs as well as do gaming content as well. So I absolutely suck at games, but I do like to have a little bit of fun every now and again to relax. And I would really appreciate it if you go over there and check out the Twitch channel. And if you're feeling really generous and you don't want me to have to rummage through dustbins to find food to eat, then you can become a Twitch Prime subscriber by linking your Amazon Prime account to Twitch and then subscribing to my channel for free using Twitch Prime. It doesn't cost anything for the user, but it does give me a little bit of a kickback. So I would really, really appreciate it if you was to do that. If not, I still appreciate the fact that you watch the videos. With that being said, let's get into this repair. So because I'm too lazy to put all of my screwdriver bits back, they're all out in a pile. And if there's any background noise, someone's using an angle grinder fairly close by, so unfortunately we've got a bit of background noise but I only have around about 40 minutes to do this repair because my partner is on a driving lesson in 40 minutes from now. And I need to get this repair done because it has been an expedited repair where the customers asked for it to be done on a rush job and they have basically paid an extra £20 for the rush job. So I need to get this done today, no matter what. And it is also the client's daughter's birthday on Wednesday, it's Saturday now, so this has to go back out on Monday morning to get back for Tuesday so they can test it, charge it, and then get it working in time for their daughter's birthday. So, got to get it done as soon as I possibly can. Whoops. One thing I am noticing is there is a little bit of a crack in the charger port, so that could be the cause, but it could be the fact that the charger port has been damaged and that's taken out M92T36 in what we call collateral damage. That's basically where the charger port will damage and it will take out one of the chips because something shorts out. It's fairly common. It's fairly straightforward to fix normally. As long as you know what you're doing. So I'll just get this opened up. And it's a Pokemon Limited Edition. Nice. So this is going to be the HID motherboard. Okay, and now that we're inside the console, we can go ahead and use the bench power supply cable to basically power the switch and verify the error code. Right, unfortunately I can't find the bench power supply end of this. Uh, I'm not sure what I've done with it to be honest. Uh, I was using my Xbox One S breakout cable. So I'll just gra grab a test battery just to basically connect up to it. Okay, so let's just turn this on. And there you go, so it shows up with an error code 2101-0. 0, 0, 1. So that's typically going to be a M92 issue. I'm going to say it's probably the port and the M92 power management chip that's causing that error. But it's not charging with the charger, so we've definitely got a port issue, I would say. So I'm going to get the board out of the case, and then I'll take it from there.
All right, that foam actually tore. Sometimes it can't be helped. Never mind. Right, that screw's just disappeared. It fell down the side somewhere. I'll find it in a second. It's fine. Okay, so I'm going to get the ribbon connectors out. Okay, so with the board removed, let's pop it under the microscope. But first of all, let me get rid of this thermal paste. I've already got conformal coating on my hand. I don't want thermal paste on it as well. Okay, let's pop under the scope. Okay, and first of all, the port itself looks fine. It's just whether or not I can actually straighten it out. I don't think I'm going to be able to. But the port itself, in terms of the pins, looks okay. It's just been split. So you can see here where the frame usually goes. That's probably not going to stay in place. It's meant to look like that with the teeth together, but it's split apart, look. So I'm not going to risk damaging the port even more by trying to lock that into place. I could probably hold it with a little bit of solder, but I'm not going to do that. So one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to cause any further damage by trying to get around changing the port. I would much rather just remove the port and replace it with a new one. So I'm going to use the hot air set to 460 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to get this removed. Rather than risking damage to the RAM, I'm going to do it from this side. So I'm just going to heat it up. So with the port removed then, I can do some more tests and just try and figure out what's going on. So the first thing we're going to do is just test the fuse and just see if we've got continuity on the fuse because I wasn't getting any kind of detection on the charger. Fuse is good. So moving on to M92T36. This is the power management chip. And I'm going to pop one probe on ground. CPU should be good. And we get a short on M92T36. And P13 is good. So we've got an issue with M92T36, which is the power management chip that's responsible for basically talking to the charger and also providing power to the system. Let's get that removed. So I'll add a little bit of flux there. And with the hot air still set at 460, because I'm removing this dead chip anyway. And I'm at 40% airflow. There we go. There's the old chip removed. So there's the replacement chip. Pin number one is in the top left corner, as indicated by the dot on the chip. And I'm going to drop down to 420 degrees Celsius now to reinstall the chip. I don't care about the safety of the old chip but I do care about the safety of the new one. So I'll just reduce the temperature a little bit just to remove it, just to minimise any chance of damage while I'm reinstalling this new chip. I can't keep my hands still today. And a lot of people wonder why I don't change the solder on the chip. It's because it's not needed, there's nothing wrong with the solder that's on there. And it's more than sufficient to make a good contact. Just give the chip a nudge, make sure it's in position. And then I'm going to press down on, I'm actually going to add some more flux rather. And then I'm going to press down on the chip and make sure that it's flat to the board. And we will see a little bit of solder squeeze out. So I'll press down on the chip and reheat. And as you can see, we've got some solder squeezage in the bottom right corner and on the bottom row. So all I'm going to do is just touch that up using the iron. Just get rid of that excess, and then this chip should be good. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to use a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol, just to clear this flux up. 
We don't want to leave Flux on the board. I wouldn't want to get my own board back and have Flux all over it. So I don't expect to do it for the customer. And also it's going to allow us to inspect the board as well. So I'll just dry that off. And that looks perfectly lined up to me. Good. Okay, so next I'm going to need to tackle the charger port. So step number one is going to be to clear out the ground holes. And the way I'm going to do that is by adding more solder. So I'm going to add some leaded solder. And what that's going to do is it's just going to, just going to change the composition of the solder and lower the melting temperature for it. It's going to make it easier to clear out. Same goes for the pins as well. Okay. And then I'm going to wick that away using some solder braid. Okay, so there's the bottom ones done. I'm just going to get some fresh wick. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit of hot air here to help me. So those holes are not fully cleaned out, so I'm going to flip the board around and I'm going to do it with the solder sucker just to finish it off. Ah, shoot. I just slipped with the solder sucker. Whoops. That's the problem with using the solder sucker. It's quite violent. Yeah, let's just sort this out quickly. Told you I can't keep my hands steady. There we go. No harm, no foul. Alright, so while I'm on this side of the board, I am going to test those filters. Just make sure we get continuity. I don't want to put it all back together and find that there's no continuity on it. Okay, the filters are good. Right, so it's time to tin these pads here then. Just put some fresh solder on those. I'll just add some flux. Take some leaded solder. There we go. Freshly tinned. All right, so I'm going to drop this new port on. So I've got the motherboard hanging over the edge of the table again, like I usually do. And... I'm going to heat up the area first. I don't want to drop the port straight on. I want to heat it up first so as I can reduce the heat on the port. Drop the port in place. Keep the air moving. Let's move the air away. Now I'm going to straighten up this coil slightly. There we go. Beautiful. Alright, so just inspect it on an angle. That looks beautifully straight. So, the final thing I need to do is, number one, tin these pin, pins here, just to make sure that we've got good contact on the back pins. And number two is going to be to solder in the ground legs just to make sure that it's not going to move in the future. Let's just clean that up. I think I might have a bridge on there. And that's what I get for not switching to the micro pencil. No, that's fine. Nice contact on all of those pins. Awesome. Okay, the final step, I'm going to solder in the ground legs and then we should be able to call this done. Oh, that's a little bit out of focus there, I didn't realise that. My bad. Okay.
Good to go. Okay, so let's give this a test. Let's pop it back in the housing. And I now have nine minutes before the driving lesson for my partner. So just enough time to test it. So I'm going to pop one screw in just there. And then another two screws for the charger port. Number one, I don't want to damage the charger port by testing it. Number two, I don't want to have to take the game card reader back off just to put a screw in. So I'll do those screws there and then just to prevent me having to do it again if I don't have to take it back apart. If I have to take it back apart, it's only three screws. And if I don't have to take it apart, then it means I'm not risking damaging the Lego connector on the game card reader just to put a screw in. So it makes a little bit more sense just to put a screw in there. Okay, so this shouldn't be so dead that the battery is going to take forever to charge because it did turn on for me while I was grabbing the screenshot. There we go, we get a charging symbol. Excellent. Switch logo. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Let's test it the other way. Boom. Charging both sides. I haven't got a dock set up at the minute. Uh, I will test it on the dock, but I haven't got a dock set up. But the issue that it came in for is now fixed. It's charging both sides. And it's turning on exactly as it should do. And there we go. That is pretty much that. Let me just make sure the Joy-Cons still work. There's one. There's another. Beautiful. Okay, so I do need to leave this to charge as well. So I make a point to charge them to at least 50% before they go back to the customer. So I do need to leave it to charge anyway, which is absolutely fine. I'm just going to test the game and make sure that works because it is a fairly fragile component, the game card reader. It does load up Let's Go Pikachu. And that's the game that I tried it with. So there we go. I will test it on the dock, but it is charging both sides, so it should be absolutely fine. I don't have a dock set up right now and I don't really have time to get one set up. So... I'll leave it at that for this for this repair. But it is charging both sides, so it shouldn't have an issue docking. But let's just summarise then. So this was sent in because it had a charging port and a 2101-0001 error code. And by replacing the charging port and by replacing M92T36, all issues appear to be resolved. So the customer can have this back. Hopefully the child is going to enjoy it for the birthday. I believe they've got some new games that they wanted to give her for her birthday, and that's why they wanted it repairing now. But we should be absolutely fine. It should be all good. But that's going to be for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you do have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I will always do my best to answer. If you want to organise your own repair, you can do so by getting in touch using the website in the video description. If you want to support the channel, if you enjoy what I do, you can become a Patreon supporter using the link in the video description. You can become a channel member using the join button down below. Like I said earlier, you can go over to Twitch and link your Twitch Prime account and subscribe that way. Or you can just watch some more videos. There is, of course, links to some of the products that I use. If you do use the Amazon affiliate links, I do get a little bit of a kickback when you purchase something on Amazon. It doesn't matter if you purchase the stuff in the video description. If you use one of those links and then buy something else, I'll still get a little bit of commission. But that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.